last time on Selling Vessel Wild Child, we went from Winter Harbor to Bar Harbor, where we clear custom and immigration. After that, we went 14 nautical miles to Southwest Harbor. We found a marina with a laundromat, so we were able to dry everything because the passage in the Gulf of Maine was terrible, everything was wet. We took the time to replace the furler line also. Saturday morning. So that was the arbor we were yesterday. Another cloudy, cold day, no sun. Like Lexi was saying, it's uh, we left two weeks late. The wind forecast that day was only for one or two knots of wind, so we motor sail all day. Lobster trap, they are everywhere. It's a real hazard for a sailboat. Bring my head and a hat and gloves, of course. It's gray because it's always gray. We never see the sun. It's gray, it's gloomy, it's boring, it's motoring. It's shallow water and there's lots of islands. What are you gonna do? You can see that our happy skipper is all bundled up because it's flipping cold out here. Let's go south. We'd love to see the sun again. It's yeah. depressing when you don't see it for a long time. I'll be like a lizard under the sun. He's so happy. He's ducking because of the, the view. He has to see ahead for the lobster pots. Yeah. And he's dodging lobster traps. But the way our dodger is, because our boom's a bit low, to see out the front window, you kind of have to, he's tall, so he has to duck a bit. Let's take a moment to visual the danger with the lobster pot line. It can tangle on your propeller, breaking your transmission, or also tangle on your rudder and breaking your rudder, so it's a real hazard. The density of the crab pots is ridiculous. In light squirrely winds, we wanted to make our way as far to the southwest as we could. The winds were mostly on the nose and we were tacking back and forth through the minefield of lobster pots. What's frustrating about sailing in Maine is they seem to have pretty much no rules whatsoever as to when, where and how they can place their lobster pots. In Canada, the fishermen place them in long strings in straight lines, usually about 100 meters apart. In the U.S., they tended to dump their pots anywhere as they wanted, often in clusters and clumps, sometimes no more than 10 feet apart. There seemed to be no rules. They could dump them in anchorages, they can dump them in mooring fields, they can dump them in marinas right in front of the fuel dock. They can really put their pots anywhere as they want. How are you supposed to navigate a 40-foot sailboat when the lobster pots are 10 feet apart? The problem really gets exacerbated when some dumb fisherman decides to drop his entire load in the middle of a narrow channel in a rocky shallow pass where every single boat has to pass through a marked channel. The fishermen are so irresponsible making for dangerous situations for other boaters and they really don't care. It was way too dangerous for us to keep our engine on so we had to kill it so we didn't get tangled. That meant we were sailing against light squirrely winds on the nose in a very narrow area with no room to maneuver. It's very stressful for us. 
I was frustrated and angry that in this passage, some fisherman had literally dropped a lobster pot like every square meter. That was crazy. Did I mention that I hate sailing in Maine? It is awful. This is the view you have at the helm. As you can see, because of the height of the Dodger and the height of the, which is caused by the height of the boom, you know, you kind of have to duck to be able to see. And even then, can you spot the lobster pots through that mess? So that's what it's like to drive the boat dodging the lobster pots with the, you know, the boom bang and the mast and the main sheet are in your way. That's your view. So through that, he's trying to duck down, try and spot lobster pots and steer a corrective course. All day motoring in the gray, rainy, miserable fog, as usual. Yep. We're in Maine instead of Atlantic Canada. Forecast said 7 to 10 knots of wind. We actually have 1 to 2 knots of wind. You can see it's dead calm. It just sucks. So we're, I don't know where we are. We're in Maine somewheres. And then... Old Duke And then... Uh, there's an, an island there, and then in behind that, in behind there is Robert's Harbor. So just basically a little cove where we can go and hide, drop the anchor, and call it a day. 3.30. So we dropped the anchor at 3.30 at Robert's Harbor. Yeah, no win. So look at that, it's so quiet. There were two places. Sometimes when we furl it, like it's reefed. Oh yeah. Sometimes when it's reefed halfway and then it's under pressure and the furling drum's holding it, it's rubbing yeah, the okay. plastic edge on the inside, I think. That's that's the only reason possible sharp object anywhere. Okay, so, so we'll... You think we should put my scuba tank inside? Yeah. So you see the condition of that sheet. Roll of her loose sheet. We have to change it. There we go. Yeah. And the cause of that? Mm -hmm. The pink scuba diving tank. Mm -hmm. It was rubbing under, under the plastic uh, Right we changed the furler line with a spare that we bought in Nova Scotia, a quarter inch line. It was time to drop the anchor at Roberts Harbor around 3.30. It was not a fun day of sailing. No wind, one or two knot, a lot of lobster pot, so it was not easy that day. anchor around 6.30 a.m. The wind forecast for today is offshore wind between 17 to 20 knots.
It was a strange day, weather-wise. It was sunny in the morning, and a few hours later, it was a nightmare: a storm, cloudy, cold, and rainy. I love sailing, but day after day in those type of conditions, cloudy, rainy, cold, you're just dreaming about sunny day and warm weather. Wild Child was pounding on each wave. It was so noisy and suddenly we were here, a big crack. What's that? That the running backstay. Broken. Wow. The wave and bingo bow. Wow. It was a pretty rough day for Wild Child. Wild Child was injured. Broken running backstay. Further line need to be replaced, and the traveler line also need to be replaced. It was a really rough day. After a long day of sailing in different conditions, sunny in the morning, after that rainy, cold, cloudy, we made it to the Kennebec River. It was time to find a place to be safe for the night and drop the anchor. So from Southwest Harbor, first stop was Robert Harbor. We dropped the anchor after 26 nautical miles. The second day we left Robert's Harbor direction to Kennebec River. 45 nautical miles later, we arrived to Honeywell Point. 
just in front of Fort Popham, 